join myself and kill my slamity. Together, we will devour the very core. So you want to learn the neutral. Got you. I got you. This is delusional, and I'll be talking about how to utilize neutral game with Yoshimitsu. So I know that my intro sounds corny at times. I, for one, don't like doing it because of how... How should I say this? It, it, it feels unnatural to me, but I guess that's the way it goes when it comes to being a creator on YouTube. So I, I'll find out what feels comfortable in the meantime. But either way, so yeah, you want to learn the neutral. So there's a couple of moves that you need to have in memory when playing Yoshimitsu. Now, one of the moves you want to be utilizing in your gameplay is down forward one and down forward four. These are the most often moves. I don't think that sounds right. These are the moves that you have to be using as much as possible when you're trying to attack the opponent. Man, my English today sounds terrible, isn't it? I have like, what, 20 plus years in, in the States and I still can't speak proper English? I was even born here. Either way, so down forward one and down forward four. Now you have all the moves too. They're not the only moves you should be using for the neutral game. These are just the ones that you want to quickly use if the opponent is too aggressive and wants to move in. Usually how I tend to play is that I don't immediately start pressing buttons. I don't attack immediately because I don't know what they're going to do. If they're aggressive, then they'll press buttons themselves. If they're defensive, they'll just move away. If they move away, this is going to whiff and that's going to whiff. So there's no point in trying to mash buttons unless you know for sure that they're going to press something. And if they were going to press anything, the move that they're likely to press is a neutral jab, like a one jab or a two jab, since it's the fastest move in their kit. So essentially a 10 frame jab. So when you're playing Yoshimitsu, don't immediately engage with the mentality that, oh, I want to hit you, I want to press buttons against you, whatever the case is, right? That's not, that should not be your first thought when you're playing Yoshimitsu. Your first thought is to gauge what the opponent is going to do. First see what they'll do, and once you have a grasp as to how they play, then you can just decide, okay, at round start, I want to do down forward one, or I want to do a neutral 10 frame jab, or I want to do a side step into whatever big ass move that I want to go for, right? That depends on that situation. You need to start thinking with the mentality that the game is like chess, right? Thinking a few steps ahead of your opponent, because they're likely going to do the same thing to you. So back to the argument of what types of neutral moves you should be using. So down forward one, down forward four. The other move too is that you should be using Geho Sen or CD1. Or another way to do it is by pressing down forward into one plus four. Though be careful because you could try uh, doing this instead by accident if you press down one plus four by accident. You have to press down and then down forward together. So like this. And then do one plus four. It's easier to do this one than doing CD1 when you have to press forward, down, then down forward, and then press one to do this version. The only difference is that the Geho Sen from down forward one plus four is 20 frames on startup, so it's slower than using CD1, which is 17 frames. So it depends on you again, it depends on you which one you want to use, but I like using the down forward 1 plus 4 version, because as you saw right there, this is a neat trick. You can do it too with CD1 by pressing forward, down, down forward 1, but you may accidentally get yourself Samurai Cutter, but if you do it right you get that. But I prefer doing down forward into 1 plus 4 and catch him off guard. If they go for a jab, I can just launch him with that move. But we're talking about neutral game here. So when using this move, it's best to use it at tipping point. So if let's say we were to place the opponent at block, right? They're blocking my moves. At tipping point, it's minus 17 on block if you're close or far away, doesn't matter. But if you're using it at tipping point and they block it, they get pushed back a bit. And that makes it so that the 17 frames that you are essentially negative in, they can't punish you with their 10, sorry, not 10, with their 15 frame launchers. They can't do anything to launch you with. Some characters can do this, there are some exceptions, but most characters cannot launch you around this range. 
So you're completely free to do this move and just backpedal away to get away from them. Or to then engage and see what they'll do next. If you do it too close, of course, you're getting launched. doesn't matter. But if, let's say, you use it at tipping point, like I'm saying, and let's say they were to rush at you, that's a free launch just for you to eat up, put it with some hot sauce and ketchup or whatever, rice and mayonnaise, if you like mayonnaise, and, you know, eat it all up, right? Okay, I don't even know why I said that kind of analogy. Uh, uh, all right. Other moves you should be using, too, is also your down back three. Now... If they block it, yeah, it's bad. Uh, that means that they can either launch you or they can try uh, stopping you with either a 10 frame jab or what kind. So it's best to use it when you know for sure that they're not going to block low. A lot of opponents at the lower ranks, the common ranks and orange ranks have a hard time blocking low. And this is not in any way uh, trying to be disrespectful to the players that are at that rank. It's just that it's a given. I, I've seen it too many times. You probably have seen me play Yoshimitsu trying to rank up to Fujin, and they always get caught by lows. They barely ever block low. And when they try doing so, that's when I go for a mid and catch them off guard with a up forward three and launch him, or with a down forward two and launch him. Which also goes to the next move, down forward two. Down forward two is another good move to use at the neutral. You see how far that I'm hitting the opponent? This is a good move to use against the opponent. Yeah, it's 15 frames on startup, so it's a little slow, but I mean, comparatively to other moves, it's still quite quick. But it has the range. And this is safe on block at minus seven. So if they block it, you can block right after. Unless they go for a low move, then you have to guess that they're gonna go for a low and then block low. So if you use it at the decent range, not too far away though, because then you'll whiff. But if you use it at a decent range, and they get caught by down forward two, that's a free launch right there. Using your combo that you want to use right after and blah, 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 right? Good use of this move is best to be used at tipping point, not up close, not that move, this move. So if you're up, up close, it's still not a problem because you're still minus seven and you're safe. Just that you want to use it at tipping range because you want it to move close. You want them to engage you so that then you can then use your down forward two and catch them off guard. That's the best way to use down forward two, in my opinion. Now, if you want to control space against the opponent, the one thing you should learn with Yoshimitsu is how to do meditation stance and canceling it. Doing that is far better than doing, let's say this, or if you know how to do Korean backdashing, which is simply doing this. It's faster. It does have its caveats and also its um, cons where if, let's say, if you do do this, because you're kind of crouching as you're doing it. The whole premise of doing Korean backdashing is that you're crouching, so you're kind of preemptively fuzzy guarding highs and you're moving back so that you won't get caught by certain long uh, zoning moves that can catch you off guard. So it's a useful mechanic, or not mechanic, but useful technique to learn in the beginning of the game. I, I, I would say movement is the best thing you should be looking into instead of looking at how to do big combos or looking how to do uh, even neutral game as well. Like it really just depends on what you're trying to go for. Are you trying to go for to reach high levels, high ranks? Or are you just in it to have fun? If you're just having, uh, in it to have fun, then yeah, you shouldn't really be thinking about learning how to do Korean backdashes. Because when I started playing Tekken, uh, Tekken 7, I was doing this instead. I just pressed back twice and then pressed down twice. That's what I did. But I kept getting caught by homing moves. So it was really bad. And it's a little slower than doing Korean backdashing. So you can get away with doing that, but if you want to learn how to do proper movement, just do this. It's easier than it looks when you're playing on a gamepad, and it's even easier on a keyboard. It's like dumb easy. You, you, there's a trick to it, and if you want a video for that, just make sure that you give this video at least uh, 100 likes, and then I'll think about making a small little guide for that. So that way I can show you how to do it pretty easily on the keyboard, unless you just can find it yourself. You can easily find it yourself online, so you don't have to go out of your way to do that for what I just said. Now, when you're creating space, like I just mentioned, <laughs> again, learn how to do meditation cancels. You see the command inputs. 
the way I do it is that I press back and down back. So meditation, back, down back. To do it. If you do it right around the moment that you press meditation, you won't do it. It would just do like a backwards like side step. Like this. You gotta do it right when you hear the whoosh sound, like kind of like wind passing through. You hear that? Once the whoosh sound goes away, that's when you should do the cancel. If you do it quickly enough, once you learn the timing, then it looks super quick, and then you will be able to, ugh, words. You will be able to then get away from your opponents. But you don't want to be spamming them. So you want to be creating space, but not too much space. You want to try to get around to messing around with the opponent so that they can get close enough towards you so that you can then use your CD1, you can use your down forward one, down forward four, catching them off guard with down back threes, and as well using moves like up back one plus two, which is another amazing move you should be utilizing in your gameplay. If you're not using up back one plus two while you're in, in your no sword stance, you're missing out in how well you can place pressure against your opponent with up back one plus two. Now, spamming it is one thing, though. I won't say to spam it, don't spam it, because at a higher level, opponents can just sidestep you away from trying to get hit by the up back one plus two. So that's not really a good idea to spam this move just because you can't. It is safe though on block. It's minus eight, so you can still block the next incoming move from the opponent. Or if, again, if they do a low, you have to still crouch and block the incoming low. And again, in the source stance, it's also minus eight, but it has a lot more push block. So it's very safe to use. So again, the summary is, is that you've got to be creating space from your opponent. If they get too close, try using this by checking them out. Uh, by checking them out, I mean to check to see if they're going to do something. Using down forward four, down back threes to catch the lows to see if they're going to block low. And then using up back one plus two and other moves as well to catch them off guard to beat them. That's how you control neutral with Yoshimitsu. There's other moves too, for example, using Manji into 1 plus 2, but this is not really an amazing tool for the neutral, but it is really, really good as a move to engage the opponent. So if they try to retaliate, for example, you can use Flash to beat them. So that's if they press buttons. If they press buttons, they get caught by the Flash. If they don't press buttons, then you are fucked because they can just launch you or they can just jab you. Now, one other move that I would also recommend as well in the neutral is while you're in your no sword stance using full crouch by just pressing down, holding down, and then as you hold down, down forward three. Now he blocked it there, but if he was not blocking that move, this is a free launch. Now, that's not the full combo, that's just like a demonstration. So if they get caught by that move, and it has decent range, you can use it from this range. And catch them off guard. So it's a decent way of catching people while they're trying to either move in, or just trying to play super defensively by backing away like this, to catch them off guard. Now, another move that I love, that I just love to use in my games, this move is so goaded for how they essentially buff the move. It has a bit more range than it used to than a Tekken 7, and it still gives you a lot of damage if you do the right combos. And that move is essentially your bad breath. Now, I like to call poison breath, I don't like calling it bad breath, but it's essentially called bad breath, I think, for Yoshimitsu. But this is an unblockable. I have the opponent blocking. If they get hit by this, easy launch. Easy launch. So if you're far away and you're just messing around with the opponent, right, trying to like gauge them and they move in, poison breath. Getting yourself a huge chunk of damage against the opponent. Now this move can be ducked. It can be ducked. It, it is considered to be a high move. But funny enough, if you're in this stance, and somebody told me this in one of my other videos that I've made, that while you're in this stance, you're considered to be crouching. So some highs won't hit you 
while you're in this funny little like you do like you're dancing or something like that and essentially duck eyes and you can get away with you know doing poison breath the other thing you can also do while you're in the stance is also play around with this dance and then use three or four to then do it backwards uh you know to maneuver away from the opponent so you don't only have to use meditation into this particular cancel you can also use this move others have also mentioned they can also flash but I'm not seeing how that's done, unless there's a special cancel to do it. No, I don't think you can flash. I think somebody might have been confusing it with another move. But yeah, Poison Breath, very goaded. From round start, you can catch people off guard with Poison Breath. So if they end up trying to, you know, you know, hit you with that jab, use Poison Breath, because while you're in the stance, you're crouching slightly and that means you'll duck highs, and then you can go with your poison breath. But you still gotta be careful if they're gonna go for their hop kicks, or maybe they're gonna go for their down forward two launching mids they're gonna be using against you as well. So you gotta be worried about that. And they might just go for a low as well. So up to you how you should be engaging the opponent. Other moves too that I also recommend to use will be while you're in Kensho, using Kensho forward two is an also an amazing tool. For the neutral. Now, as you see the range, it's really good, really good. It's probably on par with Gehosen in terms of range. But with this one, you can move forward while you're in your Kencho stance by simply pressing forward or holding forward, and then pressing forward two to get this particular move. Now, the reason why you want to use this move is to again to try to test them to see if they're going to either move forward or if they're going to then block your incoming moves. If they don't block it, it's a free hit engager. So you would want to use this move when you can, but the only caveat of using that move is that they can simply just duck the move. So you won't be able to catch them off guard if they know that you're trying to go for that move. But this is where you play around with your Kencho stance, trying to use other moves to catch them off guard, like using Kencho into forward one. You don't even have to use like the full hold down version of it, you can just use a bit of that and that's it. And if you also want to, the best thing you can probably try using against an opponent, and I like to do this as well, is I like to check on opponents that are essentially a little for, or further away from me. I go into Kensho, I move forward. They're going to assume I'm gonna go for my forward two, try to catch them into a heat engager. So instead, as they try ducking me, I go for back two one for a big launch. Now, if you're not sure if they're going to get caught by back two from Kensho, just do one, uh, sorry, just do back two instead. If they get hit, it's fine, and if they block it, you're safe. You're not safe, in the other hand, if you were to use your follow-up, the one. It's minus 12, so they can just essentially beat you with a 10 frame or 12 frame move, and you won't be able to block it. But using it from a decent range from the neutral, catching them off guard with at least back two, or if you know for sure that they'll duck you because they're worried about the forward two from Kencho stance, you do back to one from Kencho and launch them for a combo. But that's a lot more riskier. You don't have to do it if you don't want to, if you think that they may decide to block the incoming move. You can kind of delay Kencho into back two, into the one, but it's kind of hard to perform. So you really only are doing it if you want to see whether or not they're going to get caught. So if they do get caught, and one way you can try testing whether or not they get caught is by purposely whiffing the back two in the neutral. And then doing one on purpose to see if they'll then try to retaliate and catch them off guard with the launch. Other funny tricks you can try doing as well while you're in the neutral or if you're creating distance from the opponent is using your forward 3 plus 4 while you're in your uh, default state or the one sword stance, how some people probably call it. So doing this move 
is a good way to catch people off guard, but it's not really a, a neutral tool. The reason why I recommend is not to use it as an attack, but to use it like this. By pressing back, you do this funny uh, running away uh, animation. So you can test them if whether or not if they're going to try attacking you or try to block you, and you can do this. And while that happens, it's a chance they might try to retaliate, and from there you can catch them off guard. Now, it used to be quite powerful in Tekken 7 where it used to have armor properties. It used to be a power crush. Now the power crush has been changed to forward 4. And I somewhat like the change and somewhat don't. Like some characters have multiple power crushes while well, Yoshimitsu has one. So it's kind of unfair, but then again he has a lot of amazing tools with Samurai Cutter. He has his poison breath, he has his windmill that he can use to catch people off guard. And with Heat Engager, it makes him even stronger. Now, another useful neutral tool you should be using is 3 slide 4. Now, 3 slide 4, don't use this too often, just like with up back 1 plus 2. Similar variation, or similar situation, I, sh I should say, that they can just sidestep this move easily, very easily. But if you're trying to check them, if they're going to move forward, you can use this move. Even if you miss on the first hit, it doesn't matter. It's still a good thing, uh, or a good, like, trick to catch the, uh, the player off guard. As well as, if you're using 3 slide 4, and then if you do get the hit off of the opponent, they don't block it, you can go into your Manji stance. So it's a very useful tool to use to catch people off guard, because you're plus 7 while you're using this move. I think actually you're, let's see, you're plus 14 actually, plus 14. So this gives you ample time to do stuff like, let's say, oh, you can go into Manji 2 to catch him off guard. If they press buttons, it's a free launch. If you follow up with the 4. If not, you can also go for 4 instead, if they're going to duck your high. In some cases, you can even test their patience if they're going to duck you anyways. And if you do 4, 1 plus 2, then they might eventually either stand back up, because they're ducking the first move of, let's say, Manji 2, but you're going for Manji for 1 plus 2. They get back up and they get caught by the attack. So it's a nice trick of, you know, testing their patience to see if they're going to either do one or two things. And they may even try to go for a wolf standing move. And you still catch them off guard with the forward 1 plus 2. Mm, so what other moves I can recommend to use? Ah, uh, yes. Another move that I can recommend to use as well is CD2. Or you can e either use your down forward 2 plus 3 yeah down forward 2 plus 3 which is this move it's slower than doing CD2 which is this move they look the same but one is slightly slower than the other one similar to Geho Sen if you do CD1 it's faster than doing down forward 1 plus 4 the frame bit is different so using this in the neutral is also pretty good too. So if let's say you create space and they try rushing you, catching them with CD2, if they press buttons, gives you a counter hit launch. Giving you ample time to go for a combo. But if they do block it, it's minus 13. So that's unsafe. So that means they can go for a 10 frame to 13 frame punish against you. But that's why you're using it at the, you know, a distance to see whether or not they're gonna move forward. If you whip is fine, they may not press buttons immediately unless they're not, uh, you know, if they're quick, if they have their reactions, then they may be able to uh, punish you. But if they don't punish you, then it's still safe for you to then retaliate with whatever other move you wanna use right after. I wouldn't recommend to use forward one plus two for neutral, even though that in no sword stance, it gives you like this uh, flash step where you move forward slightly more than if you were in your uh, sword stance. In this case, this is considered to be your sword stance. This is no sword stance. So I wouldn't recommend using that move because it's minus 13 on block. Even if it does create some space and you may hit the opponent with your heat engager, but it's not really a good idea to use this move unless you're sure that they're going to step in. There's a lot of caveats with Yoshimitsu. I, I do understand that some players may feel confused with Yoshimitsu. They don't know what to do against him. Uh, they don't know how to play around with him. They don't know how to use his stances as well as they need to. But it all takes time. It, it doesn't. You, you won't get good immediately with Yoshimitsu's gameplay. He, he is very tricky to play around with because you're talking about a character that has nearly 190 plus moves in his kit. And all of them are not super strong on their own. They have to be used 
together, combined together, to get a very fluid dance of mockery and trickery against the opponent just so that you can catch the opponent off guard. So if you're feeling like he's too difficult to play, I understand. You can move on to different characters if you wish. But if you want to learn Yoshimitsu, it will take time. But since this video is about the neutral game, I hope that the neutrals that I have showcased you will help you on your journey. If you want a much more thorough guidance where I make show gameplay of me online showcasing how I do these things. I already have videos up if you want to see them from the Road to Fujin uh, challenge that I've done with Yoshimitsu. Then you can see from there how I tend to play with Yoshimitsu, how I tend to engage my opponent, where I try to use meditation into the cancels the catch people off guard and using stuff like the cancels from meditation while they're trying to engage me and run towards me and I do stuff like this to catch them off guard or use down forward one or use down forward four or use up back one plus two and so on and so forth to catch people off guard. He's simpler when you understand how to play him but difficult when you're learning him for the first time which is like with every character really so it's not really something specific to Yoshimitsu alone. It's very difficult to really make him work as a character. But I hope that what I've showcased has somewhat guided you to the proper way of how to play him. And if, again, like I mentioned, if you want to see proper gameplay to see how I use these moves, I'll do one. But if you want to, I can lead you to other videos that I already made with Yoshimitsu that showcases what I do essentially with Yoshimitsu's neutrals. And you can then grasp how to properly play around with these tools. So if you like the video, please give it a like. Subscribe to see more of my stuff. Please hit the notification bell if you want to see more of my stuff. You get notified immediately when I make a video. Comment down. That also helps me greatly since YouTube tends to be a bitch at times and not really help me out. And thank you for 2,000 subs. Again, it's helped me greatly as a creator. And goodbye.